exploring more than 2,000 years of Japanese history and culture, there's a lot to soak in. Among the discoveries, modern and ancient, what will be your treasures? Part of the Japanese uh, sense of aesthetics comes through and in, in, even in the streets. Today, like many of the other days that we spent in Japan, there's a big variety of activities that are going to be happening. So what, I, what I'm looking forward to is the variety. Parts of the beauty of this temple is that it's embedded against a mountain of trees and it's with this majestic red pagoda rising out from the middle of it. Kiyomizu Dera is a Buddhist temple and a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The name comes from the waterfall within the complex. Drinking the water here, according to local belief, conveys wish-granting powers. We've really enjoyed looking at the uh, people who are coming to this temple. There's lots of Japanese school groups. And then at this temple, we've seen a number of young women dressed in kimonos. And that's always so much fun. At every turn, there's something really beautiful and incredibly photogenic. The garden complex at the Temple of the Golden Pavilion is an example of the classical age of Japanese garden design, with a highly intentional relationship between buildings and their landscape settings. We learned that Kyoto was one of the few large cities in Japan really untouched by bombing in World War II. It has a nice, really a beautiful combination of new buildings and ancient buildings. And I love the contrast between the new and the old. So we're enjoying Kyoto. The Higashiyama district, along the lower slopes of Kyoto's eastern mountains, is one of the city's best preserved historic regions. Oh, she's wonderful. She knows so much about Japan and uh, the culture and the history. And she's so tolerant of questions and questions and questions. Same, same thing inside. Whenever we ask her any kind of question, she'll do her best to answer. And if she's not sure, she'll find out and get right back to us. So she's been very, very gracious. Just 20% of Japan's land is suitable for farming. With most farmers over the age of 65, the amount of land being cultivated in this island nation has been shrinking with each passing year. The people are going to uh, experience the uh, harvest of uh, the agricultural produce called Komatsuna. Travelers can experience the learning and uh, discovery through their experience of harvesting the uh, in a farm. We've been having a learning experience with the farmers and it's been a, very enjoyable to talk to them with our interpreter leader, uh, Michiko. It's very interesting to learn about their life. Uh, until recently, she was raising the Japanese black cow. Uh, oh. Why did she stop doing the cows? Uh, this is a lot of fun. I'm, I'm from a city, so I'm not a farmer. I've never done this before in my life. I like to see the honeycomb. I like to interact with people. It's a lot of fun. The fruits of victory. <laughs> This place is called Hekitei. This is really an old house of the samurai. People brought in the uh, komatsuna that they harvested in the farm. 
and they are going to learn how to make rolled sushi that is called maki sushi in Japanese. So today you are going to learn how to make maki sushi. From now, we are enjoying making sushi roll. But uh, before that, I'll show you how to make sushi roll. Mm -hmm. This bamboo mat, this is present for you from oh. owner Michio-san. Oh. 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 You can bring back your home. Mm -hmm. Sushi means sour tasting a reflection of its distinctive culinary heritage. Fish was fermented in rice and then eaten only after the rice was discarded. Now, now we're going to roll it. The opportunities that we have to do the daily life, such as cooking, gives us a chance to uh, take a break from all the intellectual learning and to actually have hands-on and a lot of fun laughing at ourselves, trying yes. to do something that we can't really do very well. This is yeah. the way it's nice and tight. The husband's falling apart, loose. Oh, no <laughs> need to point that out. It speaks for itself. These are the cooked vegetables in the plate. And this brown one is a fried tofu. This 300 year old house was that of a famous samurai in the region. Samurai warriors included men, women, and children, all trained in the martial arts. Tokyo, Japan, traditionally known as the eastern capital of the land of the rising sun. The city has blossomed into the world's largest metropolis. With a little extra time here, what adventures might await you? Perhaps a leisurely visit to the stunning Kiyosumi Garden, or a brisk stroll through the bustling Tsukishi Market or even a quick bite of sushi before hopping on the world-class Tokyo Metro. Since 1927, the Metro has served the city with an efficiency that is unsurpassed. With a daily ridership of almost 9 million residents, it is truly the lifeline of Tokyo, stretching almost 200 miles and 300 stations. A three-minute walk from the metro lies the Kiyosumi Garden. Here, you are transported back to the traditional abstract landscaping of feudal Japan. It's like a picture postcard. Very nice. Well, what I'm really interested in is seeing the, the wholesale uh, fish sales. I saw a, a PBS special on it several years ago, and it absolutely fascinated me. So I look forward to seeing it for real. Located in the heart of the city, the famous Tsukuji Market is the largest seafood market in the world. Handling over 400 different types of seafood from across the world, you are likely to encounter Tsukishi Fair at your next meal. Despite the international presence of Japanese cuisine, nothing beats enjoying sushi in its homeland. I've experienced sushi, which I've had in New York quite a few times. So I wanted to try, the, try it on this side of the ocean. Well, how is it? Experience both the ultra modern excitement and the historical intrigue of this truly global city. 
The opportunities are endless. Tokyo, the capital of Japan. There's been so many great little experiences mm. that you can't pick your favorite one. The land of the rising sun. What experiences lay ahead for you here on a journey to this ancient island nation? We set off to see temples and shrines and we ended up by having such a wonderful time just interacting with the people. <laughs> Japan is a, a beautiful country filled with very, very polite people. We knew we would enjoy this trip. My name is Toshi Inoguchi. I'm uh, from uh, Yokohama, Japan. Yeah. I'm uh, the trip leader of Oiti's Cultural Treasure, Japan. The house in front, this is used as a kind of a, a museum. And on the, on the right side, this is still used by a family. Yeah. I uh, was grown up in the uh, Chiba Prefecture uh, near Tokyo. That was uh, the little uh, fisher town. I'm very uh, interested in uh, history and traveling. So I work as a tour leader. Uh, at the same time, uh, I study myself old and the uh, middle and modern uh, history of Japan. Of course, uh, we'll visit the famous and beautiful sites or the uh, uh, temples, but also uh, I try to include the other things uh, which can be uh, very memorable to the travelers. Japan has uh, the very long history and of course the uh, very beautiful nature and I find that the travelers are very much impressed with the beauties of the Japanese gardens or the uh, uh, buildings or the statues of the uh, Buddha. Kenroge, of course, is uh, one of the uh, most beautiful gardens in Japan. The cherry blossoms, uh, they bloom for only a short while, uh, at most uh, the two weeks, and it's gone. This uh, fits to the Japanese people's sentiment. Please come and visit them so that uh, you can also see the beauty uh, in many ways uh, the, uh, in Japan. <laughs>